in accordance with the current Santa Cruz County Health Order and the Governor's Executive Order N2920, this meeting is not physically open to the public. Council and staff are meeting via Zoom, and there are several ways for the public to watch and participate. Information on how to join the meeting over Zoom or with your phone is available on our website, cityofcapitola.org, on the slides now shown and on the published meeting agenda. Thank you for attending this city council meeting. Mayor Peterson, I'll turn to you to call the meeting to order. Thank you so much. All right, we will call tonight's meeting of the Capitola City Council to order. Can we have a roll call, please? Yes. Council Member Bertrand. Aye. Council Member Bator. Here. Council Member Story. Here. Vice Mayor Brooks. Here. And Mayor Peterson. Here. Thank you. Uh, let's go now to the Pledge of Allegiance. Example 
to all the public safety and for all citizens. For your dedicated service to the citizens of Capitola and the Capitola Police Department, I proudly award you with this life-saving award, and I further extend my sincere appreciation and recognition of your actions to save the life of another human being. We are proud to honor you tonight, Albert, as a member of the Capitola Police Department. Congratulations. Good job. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you very much, Mayor and Council Members, for the opportunity to make this presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. And uh, thank you so much for, for introducing us to Officer Garcia. Welcome. We are so lucky to have you uh, join us. Congratulations to Officer Gonzalez. Uh, well deserved. Again, we are lucky to have you with us. Both uh, just phenomenal, uh, phenomenal work. Thank you so much. I'm going to move forward now to uh, item three, a, a report on closed session. Uh, uh, Jamie, you're, you're muted still. Okay. We have the closed the year. Um, we had a closed session on, uh, I'm sorry, it, it, we held a closed session on the item on the agenda and there was no action to report. Thank you. Sorry about that. For some reason, I thought I saw Jamie talking. My apologies. That's okay. It took me a moment to ask you. Okay. Thank you so much. Um, item four, are there any additional materials for tonight's meeting? Yes, thank you, Mayor. There were two additional materials regarding item 9C, the Capitola City Park Use Permit item. Great, thank you. Are there any additions or deletions to tonight's agenda? Council changes. All right. Uh, now is the time for public comment. Uh, this is the time for any member of the public to address the council on items that are not on tonight's agenda. So I'll turn to our moderator. Larry, if you could let us know if there are any uh, emails or any participants that are looking to have public comment via Zoom this evening. I do not see any emails, Mayor Peterson, and I do not see any uh, attendees with their hands up. All right, fair enough, we will move on uh, to item seven, city council and staff comments. Are there any uh, members of the council? It looks like uh, Vice Mayor Brooks, you have your hands up.
came up with a creative idea uh, to uh, do virtual concerts, um, which would not be open to the public, uh, but they would be streamed onto Facebook uh, and even off of our website page. Um, so people can watch them. Uh, and he single-handedly, along with his band, put on not nine of these virtual concerts um, in various locations. Um, each of them were viewed from uh, 1,000 to 2,500 people. Um, and so that was um, some of the creative and original thinking uh, that I think uh, we uh, have been forced to um, engage in uh, to make our um, uh, art and, uh, many, and our social life continue. But more significantly, um, in one of his last concerts, uh, he did a fundraiser uh, to raise money for our firefighting first responders uh, and make a contribution to the San Cruz County Community Foundation. And through that effort, he was able to raise $13,000 that went to our first responders. And so uh, that was a major, um, uh, I think, achievement uh, on behalf of Alex. And I and also want to give uh, thanks to his band live again, um, and hopefully someday we'll be able to actually see them in person. Um, and I just wanted to um, share that with the council members and with staff and the public. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Story. Yeah, that's fantastic to find. We're all finding new and creative ways to get through uh, the pandemic, and that's just another, another um, example of kind of a, a new way of thinking that allows us to continue to enjoy what we've enjoyed by four, before, while at the same time giving back to the community and the first responders that are working so hard during these um, during these fires. So thank you for sharing that. Um, I just want to say briefly, um, I had mentioned in our last um, meeting that uh, a, a group of community members were working on conversations about uh, racial justice and equity in Capitola, and that we would be doing that monthly through the end of the year. Um, unfortunately, it turned out that come October, uh, when we would have done it coincides with um, a forum that the Chamber of Commerce is putting on, and when we would have done it in November is the day after the election, and we felt that people pro would probably need a, a, a moment to breathe, regardless of the outcome. So we are moving our next um, conversation about racial justice and equity to December 2nd, uh, and so be on the lookout for additional information uh, about that. And I want to, you know, I want to echo comments that both Councilmember Brooks and Councilmember Boschwork have made. One, I think it's, um, you know, I, I think uh, I, I say it as um, full disclosure. I come from a law enforcement family, and my grandfather worked for Capitola PD for 30 years, and so I have a, a lot of pride in that. I also acknowledge um, the need for change in, in systems all throughout our, our country, be it criminal justice systems, education systems. Etc. Uh, and we need to continue to speak the names of those who have um, been wronged by the systems that we need to change. So um, thank you both for your comments. I think we can be, or at least from my own perspective, I'd like to say that, that we can be both, that we can find the need for change while also acknowledging uh, where things are done right. And definitely with uh, Chief McManus and, and our team, I see so much that's done right. Um, Moving on, seeing no further comments from our council, uh, I'm going to move on now to item eight, our consent calendar. Um, this, uh, the items on the consent calendar will be enacted in one motion in the form listed on the agenda. Uh, unless any member of the public or council member would like to pull an item for separate discussion. So I will first ask if there's any council members that would like to pull an item from the consent calendar. Oh, I see a hand up. Council member Story. Yeah, I, I don't necessarily want to pull an item, but um, I did have a correction to the minutes of the um, September 10th meeting on the agenda packet page um, 11. Um, it um, quotes um, um, my comment that uh, Council Member Story clarifies, excuse me, that the city attorney can dismiss complaints. Well, um, we were actually, that was a discussion about the council action on complaints uh, and not the city attorney. So I just wanted to make that correction. Thank you. I will, Thank you. I will fix that before finalizing. <laughs> All 
All right, thank you, Councilor Story, and thank you, Chloe. Uh, any other co uh, any other uh, items on consent calendar that we, anyone would like to pull? Uh, see, Council. Oh no. Okay. Uh, is, can I turn to our moderator, Larry? Is there any uh, member of the public that have requested any of the items pulled from the consent calendar? I do not see any hands up, and I do not see any emails entered. Okay. Uh, with that, we'll entertain a motion uh, to approve consent calendar. <coughs> Council Member Bosworth, do you have your hand up? I'm sorry. Motion to approve the consent calendar. Second. All right. Anybody, Council Member Bosworth? Uh, second by Council Member Bertrand. Can we have a roll call vote, please? Yes, Council Member Bertrand. Aye. Council Member Bosworth. Aye. Council Member Story. Aye. Vice Mayor Brooks. Aye. Mayor Peterson. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we're going to move on to our general government items tonight. We're going to start with 9A. Uh, consider a partnership with Santa Cruz County Parks for Recreation's Out of School Time Program. And I will turn it over to staff. Right. Thank you, Mayor, Council Members. Um, let me go ahead and share my screen with you. regarding um, the OSP out of school time program. Um, so Town Hall and Recreation has been operating a distance learning support and recreation enrichment program for the past month uh, called the out of school time program in partnership with the uh, Socal Union Elementary School District. Uh, in developing this program, it was developed with a revenue neutral budget and the fees were set for about $170 per week for residents. And I'll remind you that the resident fee does include the entire boundaries of the Soto Union School District. Um, and then about $215 per week for non-residents. Uh, there's a scholarship program that is also available to support this program. Um, and the, and uh, individuals, many individuals have applied and have been awarded scholarship for that. Um, there are other similar recreation programs in the county, um, both um, municipalities and uh, nonprofits like the Boys and Girls Club. And those programs are subsidized and operate at about $100 per week. Um, and so for the item, um, staff has developed a potential partnership with the Santa Cruz County um, Department of Parks, Open Space and Cultural Services, also known as County Parks, um, to enter into a partnership uh, to support this OST program. Um, it would be for the remaining months of the this 2020 year, so for October, November, and December, and any individuals that are currently registered or would be registering for this program would register and pay about $20 per day um, for the program. City staff would be managing the active net registration system, but it would actually be county parks registration system. So they would be receiving the fees that individuals um, are paying to participate in the program. Um, and then, in turn, County Parks would be reimbursing the city for all of the direct OST expenses that were incurred through December 31st. So this would include the, the direct staff, the senior leaders, and the leaders positions that are working with those youth and then the program expenses and such. Um, so, if council um, does uh, accept the staff recommendation, then 
Great, thank you so much, Mickey. Uh, Council Member Story, you have a question? Yeah, hey, uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, uh, Mickey, I just um, had a question about uh, um, you know the revenues and expenses for our program. It was originally designed to bring in about thirty-four dollars a day um, for residents, forty-three for non-residents, and but now the the county's just going to be collecting twenty dollars per day for residents and twenty-five for non-residents. So, and I was unclear: are they, is the county going to reimburse us? at 34 and 43 rates or are we cutting expenses or i'm just wondering how um, um the fiscal impact um would be um, um minimized or yeah so um so the fees that we developed were based on the expenses um so the expenses remain the same and the county will be reimbursing for the total of the expenses that it would take to operate the six pods that we have in operation and, and for the staff costs and the programmatic expenses that would be related to that. So um, the county has resources to subsidize these types of programs and are able to offer it at a more affordable fee. Um, and so they'll be doing that fee collection and then just reimbursing us. So in a way, we are uh, we are stacking their program for the next three months. That sounds like an excellent deal from the county. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Story. Uh, Councilmember Bertrand, do you have a question? Yeah, I do. Um, if we agree with this program, would it make sense to reach out to some of the um, earlier request to get a scholarship but we didn't have enough money. I don't know if we have those names or if there's enough overlap for them. A little unclear as to your question. Are you asking if we would be asked reaching out to the individuals that had received scholarships? No, the ones who had asked for scholarships but we didn't have enough money at the time. Yeah, that's true. Um, we yes, we we definitely plan on contacting the individuals that withdrew from the program because they didn't feel like they received enough scholarship to participate, and letting them know that um, the fee structure is different and that we would be happy to uh, enroll them in the event that they are interested. Thanks for doing that. If if we both. No, no. So the the fund this particular MOU will involve just for the remainder of the year, and it's related to um, I think the uh, criteria for which they can reimburse those expenses. Um, and so currently, the idea would be that we would be returning to our original fee structure after January uh, without the county subsidy. Um, to my best knowledge, it is still available um, for 
seeing none, uh, we will turn it over now to public comment, and I will ask our moderator to let us know if there's any public comments from uh, participants on our Zoom meeting or via email. Mayor Peterson, I do not see anybody, participants with their hands up, any attendees, and I do not see any emails on this item. All right. Uh, with that, we'll close public comment and bring it back to council for consider uh, further discussion and a vote. I'll move staff recommendation. I'll second. <coughs> Moved by council member Story, seconded by council member Bertrand. Can we have a roll call, please? Roll call vote. Yes. Councilmember Bertrand. Aye. Councilmember Botworth. Aye. Councilmember Story. Aye. Vice Mayor Brooks. And uh, Mayor Peterson. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Passes unanimously. All right, we're going to move on to item 9B, receive update regarding the city website. Yes, thank you, Mayor. Uh, I will be presenting on that item, so if you'll bear with me momentarily. Hello. You should be able to see me now. And I'm going to share my screen. Are you seeing the slideshow? Yes. yes. Great. I'm going to try to hide my slides so that I'm not distracted. Okay. Thank you, Mayor and Council. I'm very excited to present to you the work we've done on the new website design for the City of Capitola website. Uh, I'm so sorry. One second. I am not able to move through the slides. There we go. Okay, so to remind you some background, our current website was launched in 2013, and as recently as late last year, staff was preparing for an eventual website upgrade to bring the website into the current age. We all know uh, what happened and what changed in March of this year. COVID-19 changed everything and made it abundantly clear that the website was a huge resource for members of the public and really one of the only ways for them to get their information, certainly when City Hall was closed and now we are relying on it more than ever. Uh, thanks to you on April 9th, Council authorized emergency grant funding for some website updates. So our purpose and goals were pretty clear from the beginning. We wanted to create a clear and concise resource for the public. The information should be easy to find and we wanted non-employees to be able to find what they were looking for, not only people that know exactly how staff refers to a certain permit, but someone that's just needs some information, they should be able to find what they're looking for quickly and easily, and we wanted the website to look nice as well. So, what have we done so far? Staff has done a lot of research into what the individual needs of our special uh, certain departments are, what the pain points were and are currently, we identified the goals I just mentioned, and we did a lot of content cleanup, um, including removing old information, no longer used forms, making all of our PDFs fillable so those logging into the website could fill in a permit and email it to staff. That was a big, um, exciting thing for us as, a, as citywide. And much of that content cleanup actually addressed most of the grand jury recommendations and findings that you'll remember from their report from a couple meetings ago. We also had several meetings with MuniCode, who is our website provider. Our um, representative, Amin, has been really great and super helpful. We did a lot of design analysis and uh, tweaking. And of course, uh, staff also met with the council representative, Vice Mayor Brooks, who gave very important feedback that we tried to address. So, I probably don't need to remind you, but I'll just go over 
our previous slash current homepage, uh, why do we need a new one? It's pretty old fashioned, it's kind of clunky. My personal pet peeve is that we have menus on the right hand side of the screen when in our culture we read left to right, so that's never made any sense to me. Uh, lots of text, and it just really kind of needed a refresher. So, without further ado, I'm going to present to you what our new homepage is going to look like. Keep in mind, this is a screenshot, it's not a live view. So here's our new homepage design. I really like it, I hope that you guys do as well. So this is the front half, and what I like to refer to as the second half of the screen is here. And we'll come back to these images. So some highlights. Our social media plugins are right at the top of the screen. You go directly to our Instagram and Facebook page from those buttons. The menu bar at the top, the drop down menu, has titles and keywords to again kind of guide the public to the information they're looking for. I love the color scheme. It really conveys that we're a seaside community right near the ocean. The buttons in the center of the screen replace that right hand side menu. And the arrow that I'll come back to to show you again encourages users to scroll to that second half of the screen so that they don't miss anything. So how did we come to some of these decisions? We used the metrics. So we looked at our Google Analytics page, and this is just a snapshot of August of 2019 compared to August 2020. What were the top five and six viewed pages by members of the public? And we all know why this changed. COVID, COVID came calling. So in summer of 2019, really the biggest visited site was the home page. Mostly people don't click through to another page. They just want to see what's going on right away. The other um, highest viewed were the combination of art and cultural events, which makes sense. Here that was almost exactly replaced with viewing the COVID-19 updates this past August. Again, lots of visiting of the homepage. What's funny, I think, and that's similar both summers was a lot of people are looking at the Esplanade and the beach surf cam and recreation is our other very popular visit. And then I just wanted to point out as well um, we all know that the CZU lightning fires in August had a huge effect on our community. And when I saw that our next most visited site was the Nixle registration, um, it, it kind of was a heartening reminder that, that our public does rely on the city for information. And that's just directly representing, Nixle is of course like our reverse 911 program. So when the fires hit, people were coming to the website to get up-to-date information. So we used these metrics in a lot of different ways, mostly to make decisions on what should our menu say and what should our center buttons, where should they take the public? So just to highlight, we actually made some changes based on what we saw on the analytics page. For example, this events button is gonna change. We're gonna have a, a wave image and it's gonna take people directly to the surf cam and our city calendar button will actually be called the calendar and events button. And then again, those drop down menus at the top of the page, since this is a screenshot, I can't show you exactly how it will look at this, at this moment, but under city services, there's a recreation subheading. So it's super obvious how to get to that, again, another very highly visited page. And then there's even another subheading under that for junior guards, which was farther down the list, but one of the very popular things that people come to the city to find out about. So it'll be super clear right from the get-go that the public will find what they're already looking for. Other improvements on that second half of the screen, we have our community news list, which is, it's the same as what we currently call the what's new section of our website, but I think the community news title itself is more accurate. It's more descriptive of what that is. There's an image associated with each event listed, and there's a title and a summary. So again, most people aren't going to another page. They're just looking at the home page and they're going to get all the information they need right off the bat. That's the same for the list on the right here, the upcoming events. That's generated from the city calendar and it has the month, the date, the name of the meeting or event, and the time right there. You just have to glance at it and you can join the meeting or go to the event with pretty much everything you need to know. Other features that are brand new are this spotlight window and the button on the farthest right hand side how can we help which once you click on it that window pops up with multiple options so the spotlight window 
I just want to emphasize will be used sparingly for maximum effect. Uh, this, the great example would be when the beaches were closed for Labor Day. That's something we don't want the public to be confused about or to miss because it wasn't clear on the website. So that would be the first thing a member of the public would see when logging in. You can have an image, title, and text. And again, very timely topics like there's an emergency, a road closure, things we really want people to know about. And that pop-up, how can we help button, it's kind of a fun feature. Again, you're not moving from the home page. You just click the button and more options appear. They're listed in a simple, easy to understand way. We have apply for a job, bid or RFP, connect with council staff and police, and find a form, parking spot, and public park. And again, those options were taken directly from the metrics and what people are coming to the website for already. Oh, and then another really great feature that I know um, in our meeting with the vice mayor she brought up was this accessibility widget, which will have much more expanded accessibility features, and our entire site will be ADA compliant, which is verified by Unicode. Another uh, feature that's exciting is there's multiple images that will show up in a more modern way. It, it's a little old fashioned to have the images scrolling by once you're on the home page. So instead, what Municode is doing for us, is we're gonna have a deck of images and each time you go to our website, a new one will appear. And these are taken directly from a social media um, photo contest that we did earlier in the spring. So with that, I'm really excited and I hope that you are too. I'd love to hear questions and comments. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Chloe. Let's go to uh, Council for any questions we have. Uh, Councilor Restore, you have questions? Yeah, thank you. Just one, Chloe. I mean, first of all, uh, this looks very exciting. It looks very fresh and vibrant. Um, and and um, uh, the one question that I did have was about the search feature. Yes. Um, or um, um, the, you know, the search box and, um, and the, the, and the pop-up, is mm -hmm. that, are we going to be using the same, um, um, I guess, algorithm that we had before? Is that going to be updated and changed? Yes, that's a great question, and that is something that we asked right away because I think we can all agree that the search functionality at the moment isn't as good as it could be, and Municode has improved upon that. So the search will be better, and it will be at the right-hand side of the screen at the top near the social media logo. All right, we'll go to Councilor Bertrand. You have a, you have a question? Yeah, um, follow up on the search thing. Um, if I wanted to find out when the street sweeper was gonna come down my street, um, because sometimes, well, they're every two weeks, so someone might have lost track. Mm -hmm. Is that going to be something the search function will help in? That's a great question, and I think that certainly could be. I, I would have to check. I don't personally know if we already have a specific page on our website that outlines that schedule, but as long as that is the case, the search function should bring that up if you're searching you know, street sweeping, for example. It should pop up, and then you click on that, and it would take you to that page. And I'll write that down because, always forget. yes, I'm okay. sure you're not the only one. <laughs> I'm probably not the only one. Thank you very much, Chloe. Of course. All right, any other questions from council members? Seeing none, we will open this to public comment. And I'll turn it over to our moderator. Thank you, Mayor Peterson. Um, I do not see any hands up um, from the attendees to comment on this item. And I do not see any emails for this item. All right, thank you very much. Uh, with that, we'll bring it back to comment for uh, further discussion and a vote. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, Council Member Bosworth, you have your hand up. Uh, thank you, Mayor Peterson. <clears throat> I wanted to uh, personally thank Chloe, <clears throat> excuse me, personally thank Chloe for doing a great job on this. I think it's fabulous, it was long overdue. We definitely had the right person taking a look at this, and I appreciate the help from Vice Mayor Brooks to make this look wonderful. You know, if you look back when we did this, this is a time when we had no money to spend, yet I think that it shows because of the COVID and a lot of other issues that have popped up that this was money well spent uh, by the council. So with that, I'm gonna make a motion to approve staff recommendations. Thank you. We 
have a motion? Do we have a second? I'll second. And I'd like to reiterate Ed's comments. I mean, obviously we're definitely at the right moment at the right time because of COVID. Absolutely. We have a motion and a second. Any other comments from council? Uh, Vice Mayor Brooks. Just want to say uh, to Chloe, it was a pleasure working with you on this. Um, it, it looks great. Thanks. And you know, thank you. So oh, I don't want to interrupt, but I'm realizing that I don't think there's actually a vote necessary on this item. Um, so I thought I might just jump in and mention that. You are correct. Thank you. Well, you know, it's been motioned and seconded that we uh, are all very grateful for your work on this. Thank you. That's great so thank you so much, folks, for your work on this. Thank you, Vice Mayor Brooks. I'm really excited. It looks, it looks fantastic. Thank you. And we'll let you know as soon as it's live for the public. Okay, great. Uh, okay. Well, with that, we are going to uh, move right along to item C, Capital and City Park Use Permit. All right, thank you, Mayor, Council members. Let me share my screen for this item. All right, so um, the item for you tonight is Capitola City Park Use Permit. Um, and 
program and had traditionally done that Zoom program through the community center. Um, but in order to operate their program, they're going to move it outside and run their Zoom class. Uh, Zumba, sorry, I misspoke. Uh, run their Zumba class um, outside. And so through the class program, as typically just individuals and independent contractors, they do not have um, a, their own building that or room that they're renting anywhere else. They've been traditionally using the community center as their space as their registration system. Um, and so there's a registration fee as part of the class program that the city would collect. And then the city would receive 35% of an activity fee that that instructor would decide. And then if the individual registering with a non-resident, there'd be an additional $50 on top of that. So if somebody through the class program was offering a class and the activity fee was set at $100, then the city would typically be receiving $53 per registration per class, um, assuming that individual is not a non-resident. And so um, this proposed park permit takes into consideration that these top two are can be cost prohibitive for individuals that have been displaced from their indoor space looking to do fitness activities um, and trying to still allow for space so that there's a lot of scheduling that would occur in the park with all the different demands on that public land. Um, and so they would be experiencing as a commercial um, entity a $16 per hour rental rate, and then also there's a nonprofit rate, which I'll get to um, in a few slides. So city staff uh, is looking for ways to support those individuals that have been displaced by the pandemic and ensure that there is available space for all of the increased demand due to the pandemic. Um, the proposals for this outdoor park use permit, which would be a temporary program um, and would operate when county health orders allow. So for example, if we were to take a few steps back, um, this this program might experience modifications um, and that the current class program and sports facility rental program would not be in altered as those exist to um, service individuals that have been left impacted by the pandemic. Um, so the permit process would include a business or an individual would ask need to fill out the um, outdoor park use application and it's a packet um, that would need to include the application itself, um, a copy of their city capital business license. They would also need to develop their own COVID-19 protocol for operation based on the current state and county guidance for the activities that they are operating. Um, and then also provide a current certificate of insurance or endorsement. And then upon approval, that business or individual would be able to rent um, a, a park space at an hourly rate for nonprofits. That rental rate would be $9 an hour or the commercial, that rental rate would be $16 an hour. And those fees largely exist to cover the administrative side of this process in order to um, ensure that scheduling is done and the review of the uh, application process. The current um, site that would be listed as a possibility to rent is this list here. Um, and there is some overlap with like our sports facilities. So uh, again, this is all kind of folds into maybe the sharing of that space um, and scheduling of that space. And so the recommended action for you is um, to approve a temporary city park use program for fitness and exercise classes during the COVID-19 pandemic. And I am available for questions at this time. Great, thank you so much, Nikki.
We will go to council members for any questions that we have about this item. Uh, council member Bertrand, and then we'll go to council member Story. Yeah, I just have a question. Um, you, you listed a number of facilities, and I was just wondering, depending on the activity proposed when someone comes to you, um, is like the field at JC Park or the field at Monterey, for instance, or rather large, can you divide those up so the field can be shared? Yes, uh, definitely. We, and, and it's actually currently being done for our um, sport facilities for the various skill and drill programs that we're running. Um, considering that they're limited to cohorts of 12, uh, they're, they don't need the whole field. Um, and so dividing up that space is definitely something that we would be interested in doing. Okay, so it serves more people. In terms of the COVID program, um, do we have like a boilerplate or how do we uh, know what would actually fit the standards that the county has set? I'm sorry, did you say a boilerplate? Yeah, so in other words, you know, certain um, procedures that would normally be uh, followed for a COVID situation, you know, that we handed to them, you know, as opposed for them trying to figure out how to uh, come up with a set of procedures. Oh, yes, I'm sorry. Um, so the state, the California Department of Public Health has already developed the guidance for um, fitness programs for gyms and fitness. And within that guidance, they actually identify how to do fitness classes. Um, and there's lots of other guidance throughout there that would, is a, is a demonstration of uh, best practice. Um, and so we provide through the packet that individuals would be getting, those links are provided to individuals so that they have that resource and are able to develop their protocol based on the guide. Good to know. I didn't realize that. Thank you very much. All right, Council Member Story. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. Um, Nikki, this seems uh, like um, a good opportunity to help uh, you know, commercial um, uh, recreational businesses and give them some additional space, but. I was kind of analogizing this to how we help the restaurants in the village by allowing them to move out into the street. And I was wondering, did we charge the um, restaurant uh, uh, villages uh, for that street space? I, I'm gonna defer to the city manager to the answer to this question. I, I believe the answer is yes, but I'm not positive. So we did not. We did not charge the businesses in downtown for the outdoor dining on the Esplanade. Um, is there a means of how do we justify you know, charging these particular businesses? Is it because of the nature of the location? Um, and it's something that we already charge for, but it seemed almost to me that it would be maybe an equivalent uh, situation during the COVID-19 uh, uh, time frame. It's a good question, frankly, and I think the primary difference is that in general, the parking spaces in front of the restaurants have always been used by the restaurants. The, the public parking spaces are obviously accessible to anybody, but to the extent that the business was moving out, there's even if that space is, has already generally been in use by the businesses. The parks, on the other hand, the parks are used by the entire community, and then in addition, we have this program to rent out the space in the park for the field uses, and it just seemed that it was inconsistent, where we had some people coming along and playing by the city rules and renting out the space, and then sometimes getting in interactions with folks who are trying to run classes on their own outside of our plaza. So really, I think more than anything, we were trying to fold it in and make it consistent with the other processes we have in place for people to
So um, this is something that we actually do for all of the current rentals in the park, um, primarily because the guidance for different activities has changed so frequently. Uh, even for our own programs, for like our day camp program that we run, our junior drive program, staying on top of those protocols is kind of a, a key part of operating safely. Uh, so like throughout the summer, when we started the program, we weren't required to wear masks and then needed to incorporate that youth needed to wear masks to be part of the program and, and have that be part of the pro protocol for operation. And a part of that protocol is communicating to the individuals that are participating in it. Um, and so the so for our field rentals that youth, um, the individuals are doing for youth, that exists in much the same way in order to have a clear document that they are communicating to their participants the expectations in order to participate in this program. Um, so that, because oftentimes people are confused as to exactly the way that they're supposed to behave. And when you put them in certain circumstances, um, it, we have found that it helps to be clear through a protocol document as to the expectations um, for that particular class or rental or activity. I see, and so maybe we'll circle back on during comments on and so that we just don't create a more cumbersome process for applicants when protocols already exist and it, since this is a part-time, uh, this is a temporary permit process, I think, and because of COVID that those protocols already exist. My um, follow-up question is, Is it only for commercial? 
You are correct. Those individuals still may come upon a group that has permitted that space and need to address accordingly, but no, the individual, this is not a program for individuals. This is purely for nonprofit businesses that would be served for uh, commercial. Okay, great. And so that kind of uh, leads into my next question. So um, if, for example, we permit a space for a group for an exercise class, and when they get there, there happen to be uh, several numbers of uh, just members of the public using that space. How, how are we, do we have any plan in place for um, if we permit a space to someone and then when they get there, essentially they can't use it? Or, um, you know, are we gonna uh, suggest that these people kind of show their permit and say, hey, you guys have to leave? Or, or do we have anything in plan, for, in, uh, plan in place for that? Um, it, it's very much what you kind of suggested, that the permitting process would give them a, an actual document that would say that they are uh, have rented that space for the duration of their rental. Okay, and is there um, any is there any chance that we could uh, do we have or could we consider uh, any kind of refund process in the event that someone uh, essentially refuses to leave a space that we have permitted for others? Like if, if they can't use the space that we permitted for them because, you know, a, a small softball team says we're not leaving, we've we've been here for years. Um, is there an option for the people we permitted to get a refund of their fees? Yeah, we can we can definitely do that. Okay, great. Thank you so much. All right. Uh, with that, saying no further council comments, we will go to public comment, and I will turn it over to Larry. Yes, Mayor Peterson. Um, Council, I do not see any participants with their hands raised, and I do not see any emails on this item. All right, then. We will bring it back to Council for uh, additional discussion and a vote. Does any uh, Council member have any comments? And we'll go to Council Member Bosler. Yes, yeah, uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, I think there were some great points uh, raised. I, I appreciate. <clears throat> Councilman Story's questions about, um, you know, how we were dealing with this, and as far as in relation to the, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, the, uh, the, the village, because I, I think it was clear that in the time of need, we extended uh, quite a, uh, a concession to the village merchants to help them in their business, and I feel like we should not be trying to do that for any other business in the city. And I also appreciate the comment by the city manager. Uh, the difference between the two because it made sense to me that, that you know there's a parking place that can the businesses were only like essentially valuable to those businesses where our facilities like the stage and our park could be used by anybody which makes this a different situation i i also appreciate the work that nikki did nikki thank you for putting this together it's a great job i like how we took what was considered the profit margin out of the park and are only trying to recover the fees that are actually that we, our, our, our business is the office staffing of fees that are there. So I think this is a great thing. You know, I, I, I would like to say that, you know, we, we maybe have not done all we can for other businesses in Capitola. If there was a business that felt that they could uh, gain an advantage by moving outside into the street and using parking places anywhere in the city, we should be open to that. Uh, but I don't think we've got those requests. But with regards to recreation, I think this is a great compromise to, to try to help the people in need. I wish we would have maybe started it sooner, but uh, it's better to have this now than later and uh, and get everybody through this because I want I want people to remember that we went out of our way to try to do whatever we can to let people uh, make their business. So thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Bosworth. We'll go to Councilmember Story. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. Um, I, I think this is an excellent program to, you know, help, uh, well, people maintain their health, uh, to be able to exercise outdoors, and to help those businesses that are in, involved uh, in physical fitness. Um, you know, initially, I mean, when I first read to it, my mind kind of immediately went to the surrounding neighborhood um, and the potential conflicts between the particular groups and what the neighbors may think. Um, but I did notice in the use permit, it has a at will termination um, at the will of the city um, so that the, we have the ability uh, to terminate uh, an activity that may be um, interfering with the you know quiet enjoyment of the neighborhood. And so I think that that's a good approach. I would just encourage, you know, Nikki, when you, um, 
I also hope that we could try to uh, avoid as much conflict as possible between the members of the general public that may be using the park, um, and then when you we have uh, you know paid um, uh, groups coming on and in, in in the effort of maybe trying to avoid a conflict there. But there's some way you could you know maybe roll it off or post it or somehow post and let people know in advance that it's reserved at this time um, for a different reason. And then, you know, people generally if they have a heads up about those things, they may be more um, willing uh, to step aside. So I think those are my comments, but, uh, uh, and with that, I, I would uh, support um, the, the staff recommendation. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Story. Is that a motion or just a, a, a word? Let's, 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 let's make it a motion. I'll move uh, that we approve staff recommendation. I'll second. Okay, we have a motion by Councilmember Story and a second by Councilmember Tron. For Tron, uh, Councilmember Story, can I uh, request a friendly amendment that we add, um, that we look into uh, opportunities for refunds for those who pay for permit uh, fees and then aren't able to use the space? Oh, absolutely. I think that that's only fair. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. you agree also? Okay. So we have a motion and a second. Uh, so can I, uh, any further discussion from my council? Seeing none, uh, let's have a roll call vote, please. Great. Councilmember Bertrand. Aye. Councilmember Bator. Aye. Councilmember Story. Aye. Vice Mayor Brooks. And Mayor Peterson. Hi. Great. Thank you. It passes unanimously. Thank you so much for your work on this, Nikki. Ah. Whoa. Sorry. I have a new puppy that uh, has some has something to say about that as well. Um, so we're going to go on now to uh, item 9D. Consider a resolution approving an application for the state parks per capita grant program. And I will turn it over to staff. Good evening, Mayor and Council. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen here. tonight is consideration of a resolution um, authorizing staff to um, provide the application information provided, uh, necessary for Prop 68, Proposition 68 per, per capita state parks grant. A little background on the grant, uh, Proposition 68 was passed in 2018 providing funding for drought protection, water resources, park development, and climate and coastal protection projects and programs. Uh, the funding in the per includes a per capita apportionment to cities, counties, and recreation districts. Uh, probably water districts too are in there. Capitola and in all other cities that we had to express an interest about a year ago that we wanted our per capita amount. And each city is receiving $177,952. Uh, the application to get this funding is due in December of this year, and the projects need to be completed by December of 2023, and then the paperwork racked up by 2024. Um, the adoption of the resolution in the packet is required as part of the application of the packet. Um, prior CIP discussions that we've had have anticipated this funding going to the Richmond project. Um, we've always kind of mentioned that it's going through the CIP and we're waiting for the parks grant to, uh, to, to move forward with that project. Now I'm aware that some of the council haven't been part of the development of the Richmond project. Um, it's been on the books for quite a while, so I was going to give us a little background and, and give you a site plan of what the Richmond Park project entails. Um, the current project was initiated in 2015 um, when we received another state parks grant, which we've already utilized. Um, in that early part of 2015, we held two public workshops um, down in the cleaning room. Uh, where we kind of put out some ideas and got the input from the public on their uh, visions and uses that they would be good at the park. A public hearing was held before the City Council in May of 2015 
which time the scope of the project is finalized. Some of the key decisions the council made was to uh, modify the existing wharf ward, wharf road wall um, to kind of lower it in places, inclusion of a hockey ball court, inclusion of a small amphitheater down by the building, and to defer future development of the fountain area as part of this project, mainly due to cost of uh, reestablishing the fountain, water concerns, and trying to develop that as an art project once the park is developed. Permits and CEQA were approved for the project in October of 2015. In 2016, an access project to the site was completed, um, as I mentioned, using another state park grant. This included the ADA pathways from the Nogville Shopping Center all the way up to Wharf Road. This was a requirement. Uh, the first part of the park development was to make sure we had ADA access to the site. Um, the current project plans and specifications are 90% complete. Uh, the only reason they're not 100% is we haven't folded them into you know, something that can be advertised yet. We're just waiting to make sure we don't have any changes before we do that. Uh, but as I was told you during the budget session, the project's on hold due to funding shortages. So here's a portion of the site plan of the developed park project. Along the bottom of here, to orient you, is Wharf Road, the library did across the street. Uh, the top is Soquel Creek. The building itself is this area with the two number ones in it. Here's the little alcove area. Front door is right here. So the project includes, um, this is the upper terrace garden area. So reestablishment of the garden uh, with a path going around the garden, which is right there historically. There has always been a historic overview here. This is the sundial, re reconstruction of the sundial in the middle of the garden. Um, some benches and uh, playing surfaces, I think these are chess boards, um, would be provided in. The planting that will be planted, it's not going to be the same thing we're doing um, water conservation plantings and um, sample projects here. So the plantings, but this will all be vegetated and along, and along with the hillside that goes down to the mansion. Uh, the fountain, we will reestablish the walkway around the fountain, but the fountain itself has been removed. Uh, we'll remain vacant until we uh, ascertain what best to do with it with the project completed. Put a fountain in there is about another half million dollars for the project, and we decided for obvious reasons not to pursue that. The stairway down to the mansion, the grand stairway, as it's called, would be rebuilt um, in conformance with the historic standards. So all the project is being done um, with conformance with the historic site. Because as you know, the entire site of the Richmond Mansion is a historic resource. Um, then we will reestablish the uh, walkways down here. Access to this patio will be provided, as will an AD access path coming down off of the pathway from Knob Hill. So we will have ADA access down to this area. This project does include an amphitheater, and, um, probably about a 30-person amphitheater built into the hillside here, which can be used for various uh, teaching or other sessions. Um, just want to mention that this is the area of the back patio. Um, most of you have seen. We are not providing access to that. Um, that's just too hidden back there and out of view. So we will we will keep the back part of the uh, project blocked off. Um, in 2016, we did complete the ADA improvements along the work road, the ADA pathway down here and down to the pathway that goes to Knob Hill. So that portion of the project is complete, and we're just now trying to finish the rest of it and get gathered this Monday for that. So that's the project. Um, I'd be happy to answer any questions about that. Uh, you know, the end of the presentation. Looking at the project finances at this point, the construction estimate uh, for this project is $824,300. Uh, over the years since 2015, we've uh, had multiple general fund allocations. And currently, I have $456,290 in general fund allocations earmarked for this project. So this Prop 68 grant will give us another $178,000, bringing us up to $634,000. Fortunately, that leaves us just short, $200,000 short of the project funding. 
There is another portion of the Prop 68 grant that is a competitive grant process. Um, my staff has been following that and we are prepared to make an application for that uh, for the remaining funding that we need. Um, it's, it's a very similar application that we need to fill out. So there's a little bit more information required. And one of the bigger point things is um, a community um, is qualifying for it from a community. Uh, uh, no, sorry, pointing out on the word. Uh, needs assessment. So we'll, we'll go through that needs assessment and determine the community needs for the grant and that will have an impact on that. Um, so with that, our recommendation is adopt a resolution authorizing the submission of an application to the California State Parks for a proposition for capital grant funding. And I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Steve. Looks like uh, Councilmember Story has a question and then we'll go to Councilmember Bertrand. Hey, thank you, Mayor. Um, Steve, it's really exciting to be able to see uh, some further improvements there at the Ritza Mansion. Um, and, um, uh, and so thanks for going through the particular uh, improvements that are going to be happening with this uh, grant money. But my question goes to uh, even with this grant money, we're going to have $190,000 shortfall. Um, will that create any kind of timing issues as far as being able to spend out uh, the per capita grant? Or can we stage this um, so that we can fully utilize the grant money, um, um, but you know, still maybe work on coming up with that shortfall? And one follow-up, I assume that shortfall or all these expenditures do not include uh, putting back the fountain. Yes, the fountain was removed from the project. Um, yes, and we can phase the project. We can, you know, pick parts of it to, to bid out as we get close. It's kind of what we did with the ADA project. Um, so yes, we can phase it if we're unsuccessful in identifying the, the funding. Probably, I'd probably give it at this point a year for us to identify the, the additional funding we need, either through grants or uh, local allocations. And if not, then we will, we will phase the project so we do not lose this money. That's great, thank you. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. Um, yeah, I went through both of the workshops and I was very impressed with the community response. I think the rooms were pretty crowded and a lot of the ideas that were presented by um, uh, Arsev Arnaud were well accepted, especially his expertise in um, trying to bring back the the actual architecture that was uh, current at the time. Uh, he's seemingly quite an expert in doing this and has had a lot of experience. Um, so I just had a question, the bocce ball court, um, is that that rectangular area in the center? Yeah, the bocce ball court right here with the number 14 on it. Okay, and um, what is, can you explain the native oak understory demonstration garden? I wasn't aware of that. So uh, I don't know exactly what goes in there. Um, we'll have to get back to you and talk to the to Mike Arnone about that, the landscape architect who developed it. But I think it's, it's developing where we have ivy now under all the oak trees, it's getting rid of all that ivy and planting something more native that can survive under the oak trees, but not overtake them like the uh, ivy does. It's mainly removal of the ivy is the biggest thing. Yeah. But see, we have some really magnificent oak trees in that area. Uh, as we all know, ivy kills the trees that, that um, they grow on. So <laughs> I really appreciate that. Um, I sit there often, I guess, on the inside of the gate, and I'm truly amazed at how many people walk through there. Um, all age groups, uh, carriers, you know, babies in carriages and stuff like that, young people, uh, older people. It's just amazing how much this park gets used. And the fact that you've been working on this project for so long when it comes to fruition, it's going to be a great addition to the city of Capsola. And then when the library gets finished, uh, this is going to be a great place for reading and such like that. And I'm also very excited about the, um, the outdoor, not arena, but the um, performance space, I guess. Um, the shape is a little bit different than I thought it would be, but I'm very excited about this project. And a little bit closer, hopefully we get this grant and subsequent grants 
We'll be there. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Bertrand. Uh, Vice Mayor Brooks? Yeah, thank you, Mayor. Um, Steve, what's the timeline on, that, on the next grant? Um, what's the deadline for that one? I have to verify, but I believe it is due in March of next year, and we would have an award by June of next year. We would be notified of a possible award by June of next year. All right, uh, seeing no further questions from council, we will bring this to public comment and I will turn it over to Larry. Thank you, Mayor Pearson. Um, I do not see a hand up by our attendee right now or, and I do not see any emails on this item. All right, thank you. Hey, you know, we welcome attendees who just think these meetings are awesome and they wanna watch the whole thing. That's cool with us. Uh, we will bring that back to council then. Uh, for continued discussion and a vote. Uh, and I see Council Member Bob Turf has his hand up. Thank you, Mayor. I, I think this is great that we can get some, possibly get some funding to throw into the pot for the residents. So I'll make a motion to approve staff recommendation. It's actually a resolution for staff recommendation. Okay, we have a, a motion by Council Member Bob Turf. I'll second. And a second by council member story. Any additional uh, comments or questions? Uh, Vice Mayor Brooks, do you have a new comment or question or is that an old? Okay, yes, please go ahead. I do, thank you. Um, so I, I am uh, for, this, for this resolution. Um, I would just ask that staff bring back um, more information about the grant. Um, Cause I'd like to see if we could look into when we explore that community process, if we can look into some after uses of, of the park bring that back. This is the first time I've ever seen the plan um, brought to, to this particular council, uh, to me. So it'd be nice to see that um, as we get closer to that grant application to see the Richmond plan and what, uh, what that community involvement process would be. Thank you. Can I just get clarification? So you would like us to kind of re-engage a public hearing process on this to make changes to the project at this time or just kind of advertise what's being put out um, and you want it done before the current the per capita grant not the, just the competitive grant is that correct i'm talking about the march 2020 okay. um, a motion and a second seeing no additional questions or comments uh, can we have a roll call vote please yes council member bertrand aye council member botsworth aye council member story aye vice mayor brooks aye and mayor peterson aye thank you thank you passes unanimously and with that, we have come to the end of this evening's meeting. So thank you all uh, for, uh, thank you to staff for all the work that you've done on these agenda items. Thank you to council members for your participation. Thank you to our one attendee for his participation tonight. We appreciate it. Uh, and we look forward to seeing you all again 